Welcome back to an Action Analysis, and today we're going to take a look at The Sea Beast coming out on Netflix. But actually, let's go back to the beginning here. Right off the bat, I'm in just because I love water stuff. I love, well, this is not a creature, it's alluded to, but I love big creatures. The sense of scale difference is really great, and there's some really cool stuff in there. And just quickly, to me, when I look at this and what this uh, analysis and what these are, if a new student watches this, like that's a great way for me in terms of showing weight. You can see how the character leans back first and then has that, that pull with the body to then pull down with the arm. So a lot of times, um, well, I'm, I'm guilty of this too, I assign weight assignments to students. And it doesn't always have to be, you know, a character empty scene, there's a box and a character lifts the box up. It can also be a pulling scene. There are different types of weight. So I think this, just quick, I think this is a great example. You don't have to do three characters, but you can show just one and the mechanics of that. Let's grab forward just a bit. Again, I love seeing this only because, you know, you would think that maybe characters this tall. So I love seeing it's kind of like journey to the center of the earth type stuff. I just that I'm already in. This could be, again, interesting in terms of body mechanics, just going up. It doesn't have to be a ladder. I like that this is not super tight. It's not like a, a static ladder. So there's some movement which will kind of change up some of the leg positions, even arm positions. So just again, that as an idea, that could be a cool exercise for students to have someone climb up a, uh, you know, a loose rope type of thing. This, as always, little reminders of finger animation. I always look at that. Just little changes of details. You can see how there's a slight change here. Thumb comes out, how there's a cool, quick adjustment to hold that. That just, I mean, you know, forget the rest, simplify and uh, maybe simplify just like this. But this could be an interesting way. I like that the pinky's down here. Just practicing finger animation, because that is a pain. That is going to be joint by joint. You might have a picker where you can you know, select multiple things, but it's just very time consuming. Finger animation is going to be time consuming and just a pain to do. So as an exercise, always worth doing. Let's go forward here. And I am already more in. Animation wise, not huge. But I just like seeing this. I like seeing this as the creature design in ginormous water. And you can also use this, you know, as an exercise, you could do something where what if you can almost reverse it? What if you have this, you can almost put the creature in here as a little side gag. And then that I like that reveal of oh, what did I just see? But for you in your shot, you could have something really interesting in here. Of course, there will be some compositing issues because then you have to track it and blah, blah, blah. But what if your shot is this? You don't see much of the body, but you can still have some nice finger animation, a little detail there. And it's mostly a reaction. You can go from something where maybe there's a bigger squint. I'm just saying this just because of an exercise, right? You push the facial expressions, bigger squint. Maybe there's some blinking into a holy moly second shot. Something huge, something weird, something crazy, big mechanics, a robot. So you can kind of squeeze in two connected shots while showing something totally different. I think that could be an interesting shot approach for a student. Anyway, let's continue on. This will be your close-up facial shot. This will be your creature landing shot, which reminds me I did the pigeon landing. That's always worth doing. But let's go to this. This was the first one where I thought this is really interesting, where I love how he comes up. You have that main motion, and then you have that. You got that little... <laughs> So cool. The sense of weight and just that extra motion in there, very cool. Nice silhouette, love all this here, all that, all birds going out. I think that's super cool. This was the second shot in terms of, holy macro, what a mechanic shot. Love all this. Because the thing that I love about this is that besides the free fall, right, and you can do some big arm swings, legs and arms, that's a nice hand pose despite the blur. Look at that, all really nice. The cool thing is this. So there's force, there's weight going this way, and it's being stopped by this hand holding on. So it's gonna stretch out the arm, then it's gonna stretch out the arm and the shoulder, and then it's gonna stop all of this because you can't you know, dislocate the shoulder. I mean, you could, but you know, it will stop. And that will mean that the legs will snap back. And then after that, the arm and the rest will swing while this is your pivot. I think that is super cool. As a student, very complex, but worth considering. I wouldn't add all of this because that's a huge pain in the butt. There's so much work at the same time. Same thing here, fall, 
that gets stopped by it. There's like different ways of someone's weight and momentum and you know direction being stopped by an object. But I think this is really cool. Watch this in real time again. And choom, love that snap and then that nice oh, the, the timing of that. Very cool. Nice simpler shape there. I think that's pretty cool. Got your ah, oh, too bad it's cut. Cool creature shot with impact. Can't really look at this more. You're getting more glimpses of what the world is. I'm gonna scrub a bit forward. Not that you want to do this. <laughs> this will probably be the intern shot. All right, we got 40 characters. All right, we want them all posed out. We want blinks on all of them. That would hopefully not be the note. It's cool though. I like seeing this. This is cool. This was another one where I thought, oh, okay, okay. What are the fingers doing? Because it's not your lift where your arms are below, right? And around it, where someone might have the face squished, the cheek squished, and trying to lift it, pivoting that way, which could be a cool way to do it. It's pretty difficult. Where's the other arm? Do we see another arm below? No, it seems like one arm here, the other arm on the other side, and then you have to push in. Try that at home. <laughs> That's not that easy. But what I was looking at, are we going to see the tension in the fingers? And we are, because they're tight here, they're straight. And then, shoo, see this? You can see, I'm exaggerating, but you can see that bend. A bit less in the thumb, but the thumb is doing something. But you can see the tension in there. So that's something you think about in terms of your uh, weight assignment variation, right? Could be something where it's not just from below, but you press your hands, but definitely show what is going on in terms of the force. <laughs> it's a cute uh, pose reveal. We got some more close up-ish facial stuff. I'm gonna scrub through some of this, even though it's awesome looking. This was cool too. That was the next one, right? Watch this. Pa -pa, and then this, and then that. Not long. Like, how long is this? We are going from, should I count? I'm not gonna count. I'm gonna bore you with counting, but this starts at frame 1019 for me. And done. 1019 to 1073. About two and a half seconds-ish, something like that. Maybe two seconds. Not long, but look what you can do, right? You have a really nice, strong line of action with, you know, the counterweight so that she doesn't fall over. It's good for balance. Then you have the big swing out with a really nice, look at that, line of action. Love this here. It starts here. Boom. Then this goes back, which goes up here. And you could change this where the character is maybe not as strong, meaning this will shoot, buckle here the elbow, go back, but then the recoil is so strong that it's going to move that arm maybe even further back, shoulder goes up with more impact on the chest. Just to kind of push the mechanics as a student shot. But I love this and I love this, ready? Just letting it go, I love that. You can see the fingers open, it goes slightly off with a slight weight on the fingers, then choo choo. Because imagine if you have something really heavy on your fingers and the weight goes off, your fingers are going to snap back a bit. I love that that's there. Nice finger poses into the next focus, right? So now you have overlapping actions where this is action one, two, and this is a different action. You got a big change of posture, right? Versus, let's go back, versus this open pose where we're more, let's go back into a bit more scrunch together, big anticipation into, that is awesome. I love this, into this. Cool pose too. And of course, you can do some tail, creaturey stuff, just the generals, you know, composition is cool. But that could be an interesting action within two seconds, right? You got two different body mechanics, including some cool personality type of thing. And then, ba -ba! I think that's pretty cool. Be a great assignment. Again, two seconds is not long. There I say, I would also do this, by the way. An exercise like this, a prop. How do you show the weight of this? going into wood, how it, since it's hanging, not detached, you're gonna have some impact and some wobble. Then you can have another piece where this goes through this into the wall, which means there won't be any wobble. It's gonna pin it to the wall. You know, it's worth animating props and properties of props in terms of the weight, the wood, blah, 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 all that stuff. Don't just stick to characters. I think that's really important. Let's continue on. We got some cool facial moments. There's a cool here, this one. That, I love it. A, the water, the renders, big creature, sense of scale. I'm so in. That's cool. That was the next one. Now you might say, JD, I can't do water sim. <laughs> yeah, neither can I. I know, that's not the point. The point is that 
someone is struggling in an element that is, I would say, unfamiliar. It's clearly a pirate. They, should, they know water. But, you know, it's not something that everybody's good at. There's this massive, uh, you know, maybe the, the pressure of the creature going up and all this, the fear of getting, you know, swallowed. All of that is cool. So you could do maybe just a plane, take your vertices and move them up and down. And that's kind of that. Maybe some bubbles, you know, like some spheres. Just hint at the nature of what this character is in. And then just concentrate on, it's too short, on this. The struggle of this, I think that's pretty cool. Then you could push this where you could have mouth closed, big, like cheek shapes, opening, you know, that you can do a bunch of stuff. And he has a bit more of a, more out of control where he rolls to the side. And again, look at how short the shot is. It's so short. And you could combine it from this into actually this. And then you have a cool little push off. Then you could show, again, properties of a much bigger character, how those jaw, you know, those elements of the jaw will clang together, maybe, maybe open up a bit. There's some rattle or something. It's not long. I mean, what is this? Maybe just from here on. Strong. Come on, it's like two or three seconds. There's so much you can cram into those seconds in terms of just an exercise. Also, you don't have to see the rest of the body and the legs, so you can kind of play with the transparency and opacity of, of your, you know, water, mud, whatever you have here. Anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. It was a cool idea for a shot. This is Q2. I always love this, again, because of scale difference. And you can shoot reference for this. You can see your own kids. You can see kids online, like whatever, you know, you want to observe kids. And that's going to be something you can reference easily and act things out for yourself with the contrast of some smaller also weirder creature where you have more cartoony freedom i think that as a shot idea i already like and i think this is really fun that it goes around there so then you can play with a reaction so as a student i wouldn't cut out here and i will play with the big ah freak out reaction or you go against the grain where she has this but then goes into a big smile leans forward and pets the creature you know you can just play against expectations that is also cool in terms of weight. Again, we talked about weight before. It doesn't have to be a box lift. It can be something heavy. Cool, clean pose. Onto, like landing onto someone who then has to deal with that weight and just the impact and the bounciness, right? Watch this. Shaboom. Pretty cool. And you can still put some acting in there, some cool performance poses. And then I love the contrast of this. Further out, wide, probably, you know, squatty. And then... <sighs> into this everything is straight feet together might have been fun to put the the feet up toes curled but everything is tighter that's why i would say the feet up and then you have you know punctuated by all the arrows again which could be fun in terms of props because you can do the impact the wobble how long is this just both of them actually right if you just do two three four again you mean it's so short but you can do so much in there in terms of weight and then contrast and comedy. So it's not just, what's the concern is always that as a student, you go, all right, this idiot Swiss teacher gave me a weight assignment, right? Where's the fun in that? Well, then you do something like this. You can still play with expressions. You'll have some pantomime acting, a contrast for comedy. You can still make this entertaining for yourself so that the exercise is not boring. This was another one just in terms of a shot. I love this. I wonder how brutal it's going to be. Imagine, cuts open, slides down, cuts open, all of this, and then little creatures come out. Anyway, let's go forward here. That's. I think that was mostly that. This, I thought, kind of cool, only because I'm always a big fan of either it's a prop on a surface or a character on a surface where you as an animator have to tell the audience what is that going to be? Slippery, sticky, rattly, bumpy, how is it going to affect the character? I think that you might think, well, you just pull the character down, you know, you know, from A to B on a constraint, maybe, and then some poses. Sure, but I think there's some more, it's just more to it. Where you can do something where what if, what if, right? You got some moss and algae and some something. Maybe this has been in the water as well. So you got some some watery, planty stuff, and this is the wet wood. So you have the character sliding down, and when it hits this section the feet will get stuck he might buckle up and then fall over you can show as an animated the transition the change between slippery surface to something else and i think that's cool that's cool to animate so neat neat bra poses love that 
And I think that's that. We're in the water. Creature shows up. Title. <laughs> Actually, I like this too, where, again, just in terms of a reaction, and then we can see what's going on. I like just this idea. If you would take this out as a shot, this doesn't have to be water, right? This could be land. Where, what if. What if the kid is. I'm old. I was going to say, plays with the Game Boy. <laughs> that's how old I am. There's a Steam Deck. Okay, maybe the kid can't afford a Steam Deck. Anyway, a portable, a Switch, whatever, right? Kid plays with this, head down, looks up, and then has this reaction, and maybe even drops the handheld. So that could be your mid waist up, close up acting. And you go, huh, what did the kid see? And this could actually be maybe in a bus or something, I don't know, or maybe just on a bench. Cut to this, and there's another person, and you got lip sync or pantomime, but it's maybe even more blurred out, so you don't really have to worry about the lip sync too much. And that person's just there to kind of react, but it's all about maybe a ginormous robot stomping through the city. And then you have, you know, I was going to say, some destruction stuff. And as a student, it might be too much, but could be kind of fun. Stomps through, the camera pans with it. There's more stuff happening, and then maybe you can go crazy, and there's a, you know, kaiju creature fighting a robot, Pacific Rim style, while the parent is going, what's going on? You know, maybe, maybe the parent or older brother's headphones on. That's why they don't hear what's going on so that it makes more sense for this character to not react to anything behind this, like this character, which he does here. <laughs> I actually love this. I love this reaction. Huh. Okay. And I think that's that, right? We got this. Man, this could be another cool mechanic shot, right? This guy handing, holding on to this, the sliding, plus holding on to someone else, the mechanics of dangling and swinging. I know, to me, this is the, the mechanics trailer. There's a lot of cool stuff in there in terms of just shot ideas for students. It's cool, pretty cool too. I love this creature. Anyway, that is that. So hopefully helpful for shot ideas and a little body mechanics deconstruction. And I am definitely looking forward to this movie. And that's it from me. So thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you in my next upload.